Hey guys, and welcome back to another Cinefix Roundtable. This week we have some very special guests with us. We have Aaron Kelly and Josh Cantor from MoviePilot.com. Thanks for coming, guys. Thanks so much for having us. Hey. Here, here. Small bit of applause for you. So this week, Aaron and Josh brought with them a number of topics for us to discuss. So, diving right in, what did what'd you guys bring with So, um... <laughs> I thought you brought them topics uh, with you, boy. Get them on your fancy computer, so don't you? So the weather. <laughs> well, Mrs. Doubtfire is making a sequel 21 years later. This is true. I think, it's simple for you guys. I think the average age of readership of movie pilot don't remember Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, remember yes. How yeah. unexcited they are about Mrs. Doubtfire. Because they're so old or they're so young. And the only relation they have to Robin Williams is that he plays a genie. <laughs> So they're not exhausted with Robin Williams. So they're not watching yeah. his sitcom yeah. on. That doesn't exist. On some so they, they got to they got to miss like like Centennial Man and all that yeah. stuff. Would they be more excited to know about him if they knew he had a pig aorta? What? what? Really? Are they they gave him a pig? My aorta? grandmother has that. <laughs> would they would they be more excited if so they knew that, that he was? What was that movie where he was like a children's clown? <laughs> Patch Adams. Oh, okay, real quick. Patch Adams. He was a me he was a man of medicine. Yeah. Patch Adams. All right. I know. And what he you wore a clown about. nose. It was a very that was the saddest movie ever. Uh, I love that. Because it was made. No. <laughs> That's like 16, 15, 16 years old. Movies really, nobody here is going to shit on Jack? This is like, okay. like, <laughs> Jack was great, too! No, Jack, was <laughs> Jack was not great. Jack was not great. I'm, I'm this close to making you leave the room. <laughs> Don't even put Jack in there with Mrs. Dodd. I, I feel like Jack did this awkward left turn about two-thirds th of the way through, where suddenly it was a sad, heartwarming movie. Uh, if you do a Mrs. Doubtfire 2, it will do the exact same thing to the first Mrs. Doubtfire. The first Mrs. Doubtfire was a fun romp with a dude dressed like a lady. If you try to go back to that, you'll just take away the whole happy ending and you'll just be like, what kind of zany hijinks can we do? Oh, let's throw a gender identity thing in there, maybe. I don't know, but I, I don't think like it's going to be very creepy. That. Robin Williams is already getting creepier <laughs> as he gets older. <laughs> and this movie, if you think about it, somehow you got away with this kind of stuff it's, in the 90s. It's, it's kind of like and the Dark Knight. Like, you know, he's like, oh, I'm going to be Doubtfire again. <laughs> 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 he has to go and get what? that costume. Not the nanny you deserve. Out of the closet and put it back on. His kids are in college. I'm back! That's the thing, too. Like, they already know who he is. But maybe he'll do, like, yeah. other costumes. I mean, because he has a million voices, so maybe they'll introduce other characters because we already Well, he got a, a T... Mrs. Doubtfire got a TV show exactly. at the end of the last one. Yeah. So maybe now she's canceled because people found out he, she was really a man and it gets real... And then she starts... Oh, hey. may, maybe she starts, like, uh, Mrs. Doubtfire's Drag Race. And that's... <laughs> Yeah, no, I get sued really by Glad <laughs> because I can't think of anything more defamation y than defamation yeah. So so the, the verdict we have on Mrs. Doubtfire too is is one people won't care that much. That's not true. Probably. Well, I just don't know how they're going to make it relevant for a new generation of young people. It's like it's okay. like we it, need it, was, it was great back then. Like I, it was came around. It came out right around when I was born. But I still remember this movie that I watched while I was a kid. Yeah, I mean, and so. uh, I enjoyed it. But I don't know how for the next I generation of kids, kids huh? <laughs> especially like as a sequel. Like if they were going to go through and like reboot it, I would be like, Ugh, but I would at least understand that. Yeah. But right. I feel like it's like Medea. Like we've got so many of these now. It's not really. Yeah, a new but it's now. not Medea because. Tyler Perry, Medea is Medea. Medea is not. Medea is not Tyler Perry dressed as Medea. Medea is, is. She is in real life, but in the movie. It's like, I was like, I think no, no, you're wrong. No, she I, was, is, I was just going to save is, that conversation for after the round table. She is, but in the movie, she's not. Like in the movie, she's not Tyler Perry dressed as Medea. In the movie, she's just Medea. Mrs. Doubtfire is. Robin Williams' character dressed like Mrs. Well, Doubt. Thank God we cleared that up. It's, so it's more Big Mama's creepy. house than it is. It's Medea. more Big Mama's house. Yeah. And there was a sequel to that. Yeah, so. yeah there's more than one. That's how it works. <laughs> Listen, and uh, guess what? When 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 Dad dresses a lady as as a as a lady to hang out with his kids, it's a funny premise. When Grandpa dresses up as a lady, he's going to jail. <laughs> That's what clearly it left a lot of ground to cover because now we need a sequel. The good news yeah. is the guy who wrote Elf is doing it. David and I think we all yeah. We can all uh, be happy about that because Elf was great. Yeah. To get into our next topic, I concur. which is uh, more potential additions to the Batman versus Superman, which is still technically Man of Steel 2. <coughs> Justice League. It's still technically Man of Steel 2. 
But everybody's calling it Batman versus Superman. Right. Batman versus Superman with Ben Affleck potentially playing Batman, but maybe just playing Bruce Wayne. Oh. oh. So the new the new theories are it was it was a leak, then it wasn't a leak, then it was a theory, then it wasn't a theory that he is playing a retired Bruce Wayne who is older, who hasn't bought the suit in a long time. So it doesn't fit very well. Doesn't, and, and he basically just runs his whole Wayne Enterprises and, and, and stuff's going down and Superman needs his help and the big crescendo at the end of the movie, which will be pretty disappointing, will be that he puts the suit on. And I think Ben Affleck plays a pretty good retired... Well, he's good. Yeah. We know, gravelly, right? yeah, old yeah. gravelly, yeah. sort of like. And he's back on the he's good at playing a boring guy, so <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's what he basically do. You know, so. so it could be very disappointing. It might be this whole Batman versus Superman thing could build up to Batman putting on the suit in the last twenty minutes. That's the weird thing about it because that that sounds like a really cool way to kind of right. go about a Superman mm -hmm. sequel and, and like you know build out the world a little bit, but like. You know, after what what will have been close to three years worth of like, oh, Batman versus Superman, yeah. maybe right, Justice right, right. League, and then to not it's have sweet. Batman in it at all, like everybody's just gonna go out of the theater, turning tables upside so the down. So the, the the reason that Batman versus Superman is a thing is because when they announced it at Comic Con, they made a really big deal about like using the quote from when Batman actually fought Superman in the comics. And they got the logos they, on top of each other. Logos on top of each other. They made it. They 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 set it up. They set up the expectation for all the fanboys. Right. That this was going to be, no matter what the f else happens in this movie, this is going to be the moment where we get to see Batman and Superman fight each other on screen. The thing is that Lex Luthor might be the guy that has to call Wayne Enterprises for help. And Metropolis is destroyed, and they need Wayne oh, Enterprises true. to come and help restore order in the city, so Batman has to come and restore order in the city and fight Superman. So it could be a fight. Uh, the question is, is, is it the last scene? So if it's anything like Man of Steel, they'll drag out the last scene for a bit. Oh yeah, it'll be a 35 <laughs> minute fight. So you might, you yeah, might get a good happen. fight, you just might not get like, Ben Affleck in a suit. And what if, what if uh, Ben Affleck as, as Bruce Wayne... I can Wayne, you're about to do a joke already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got one, I got one. How dare you? <laughs> I'm sorry. How dare you to step on my <laughs> joke <laughs> like wait, that? Wait, wait, wait. wait, say it, say it. No, it's I can't do it now. No, 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 no. He's he poked jealous. a hole. I thought that was going to be jealous. his best joke. It was. So. I've been working on that one all. He's been leaning back, just drawing it up on the iPad. And then yes, like, yes, yes, well, yes. I see it now. Yes, I've got it. I've got it. Yeah. No, I mean, what? What? It, I can't do it now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. Now. <laughs> no, I can't because there's no oh, joke no. now. Just push the tomato. Just, well, Zack Snyder actually gave an interview. I don't. I don't remember who it to who it was, but uh, or to whom it was. Mm. No, that was the correct. Um, but uh, he was talking about like where do you go from Superman essentially fighting one of his own, like fighting Zod on essentially our turf, and like he was kind of pushing for Superman to fight Batman from sort of the beginning of that process. But it is, I mean, look at the first movie. It's so over the top. It's it's just like we're bashing the f out of each other, and these guys who are invincible anyway, so you know they can't hurt each other, and they're fighting for 35 minutes. How do you get Batman anywhere close to that? Because Maybe Batman wears a kryptonite suit. I mean, that's, <laughs> what he has, that's what he does in the comics. I, I, I would love to see sort of an inverse, and it it be like a much more intimate sort of fight scene, like like candles and really? wine, <laughs> and just like they're both a fighting bubble in the bath bathtub. and some little just like some real Greco-Roman wrestling kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm just talking about like oils and a good out in the open, you know. Straight to the loin cloth. I want like a like a Rocky montage scene. Ben Affleck goes from chubby Ben Affleck to like. Yeah, mostly Ben Affleck in the space and then they fight for forty-five minutes. That's yeah. it. That's the whole. That's the whole. And then they leave into the sequel. Well, but now and then Robin's in there, like refereeing, so, like he's refing. So the thing that we saw that could be completely, you know, tosh was that there was a theory out there that retired Batman has a league of juniors uh, keeping order in Gotham, and in there there could be like a Robin and there could be like a Batgirl who are these younger guys who he's trained up. Ah. So he's now this like retired overseer. Well, the way that they're the way that they're going and the way that they're adding characters to this movie, like it wouldn't surprise me if literally every Robin that has ever been is part of his little bat team. Right. So there's like there's there's Dick Grayson and there's Tim Drake and like all of them are in little bat suits. You can't you can't have all the, the Robins are totally gonna fight if they, if you get them together they're gonna argue. Well, it's not gonna, if they have not if not if uh, not if. Uh, OG OG Robin is is already Nightwing and he's like he's like the warden of the Robins. He's got his yeah. weird stick. This is like Orange is the New Black, but all Robin. <laughs> all Robins. I would watch the <laughs> shit out of that. Too many Robins coming to CBS. Too many Robins. Now we're talking. But if they go, 
I mean, if they put, they won't, but if they put Gordon Lovett <laughs> in there, yeah. they put just Gordon Lovett in there as Nightwing, then they have, like, I mean, it's DC, right? And look at what Marvel are doing with all these spin offs, and they'll be like just running on, you know, if you put just Gordon Lovett in there, you only have to intro him in the film to then introduce a Nightwing. That would be yeah. awesome. I feel like I'm totally technically, they would have just recast Nolan's. Bruce Wayne, because at the end of, right, right. of yeah. Dark Knight Rises... But no, no one's never going to touch Batman again. So he's, right. he's, well, like, this, he's gone, and now they pass it over. And then yeah. mm-hmm. This premise sounds very much like the end of the Dark Knight Returns comic anyway, where he, he retires but still oversees right. the younger generation of crime fighters, um, but with the uh, uh, probably not the Carrie Kelly Robin, unless no. it's the Carrie Kelly Robin, in which case Gordon Levitt definitely, definitely. does not want to play no. that. <laughs> It'll be Emma Stone. You're not going to squeeze, I mean, you can't squeeze yeah. that many Batman movies out of Ben Affleck because he's just too old and he's not that relevant. So either you're going to. Because eventually you're literally <laughs> squeezing movies out of him. I, like, I don't think you're going to squeeze a trilogy out of him. So either you're going to like just run with like Henry Cavill and do that for a while, or you're going to introduce a new, younger. Nightwing, Jesse Gordon, another character. If they would reduce Bruce Wayne to sort of like a Nick Fury kind of role in, right. in like a bigger awesome. Gotham universe, yeah. that awesome. would be pretty cool. cool. I know, maybe I'm the only person who no, thinks I, this, but okay. Jesus Christ, is every f- movie going to be a superhero movie? Like, so many different iterations. Short and answer is yes. Yeah. The longer <laughs> so answer right. is like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 but so, since you're so thrilled with uh, with superhero movies, staying in the superhero world for a little bit longer, yet another ham-fisted segue. Um, <laughs> we wanted to talk a bit about Spider Mensch, right? That's not where I thought you were going, but okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's right here. <laughs> right. So Andrew Garfield comes out and says that he thinks Spider Man is Jewish, and not only that, he thinks that it's possible that the whole Spider Man story is an allegory of post-war Judaism in America. Post okay. World War Two. Okay, if you say yeah. so. Like post Holocaust Judaism. Yeah, in America. Thanks. Yeah, what's your do you want the quote? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's actually it's actually, it's actually yeah, really interesting. Quote. I quote: <laughs> "Spider-Man is neurotic. Peter Parker is not a simple dude. He can't just switch off. He never feels totally. like he's doing enough. Peter suffers from self-doubt. He ums and ahs about his future because he's neurotic. He's Jewish. It's a defining feature. I hope Jewish people don't mind the cliche because my father's Jewish. I have that in me for sure. He's an overthinker. It'd be much easier." if he was a life-saving robot. It goes on. Some Spidey scholars, I love Spidey scholars, (laughs) some Spidey scholars believe the story is an allegory for post-war Judaism in America. An orphan, as many Jewish children were, and as a result of Nazi Nazi atrocities, Parker is a good, smart boy who lives with his aunt and uncle in Forest Hill, Queens, home to one of the largest Jewish communities in New York. The angst-ridden Parker fights evil by adopting an alter ego. Some Jews choose to submerge their identities to avoid future persecution persecution, and often uses native wit whilst outsmarting his enemies, speaking lines of dialogue close to Yiddish shtick. And it's also well known that, that um, Jewish people actually can shoot webs and out of there. Yeah. yeah. So there, that's it. That's uh, it. This is where he pushes, I mean, he's already Up to now, I, <laughs> oh, but up to now, I, I'm on board. And that's when everyone's like, okay, okay, this guy's maybe going somewhere. And then he says, he's misunderstood like Jesus. Yep, oh. there it is. <laughs> I don't mind the Jesus parable for Spider-Man. Jesus is an awesome guy. When, when Pontius Pilate said, they say you're the son of God. If you're the son of God, tell me. Jesus was like, I know who I am, bitch. <laughs> and then he walks away. That's it. Yeah, yeah. He, he John 326. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I know who I am, bitch. Andrew Garfield has spoken. Let's call this meeting of Spidey scholars. <laughs> order, order. I mean, doesn't this always come down to like the actor wants to think that the role is bigger and means more than it actually is? Yeah. yeah. Well, look, I mean, I, I do I do like him as Peter Parker and Spider Man. Like, I think I, I the movie was. Yeah, and the second one doesn't. Lo- it looks like at best it's going to be the same kind of yeah as the first one. Yeah. Uh, but I did think he was a good Peter Parker and Spider Man. Um, so if this is what he's got to have in the back of his head while he's doing it, you know, it's fine. I mean, I, I like that he brought the like snark back to yeah. Spider Man yeah. because, yeah. because yeah, that Jewish yeah. snark, <laughs> the, that, that that neurotic <laughs> Jewish <laughs> snark <laughs> back to Spider Man because I I, th- I thought that was really lacking. And Tobey Maguire was I love the Tobey Maguire Spider Mans the first two, but he's a little too mopey. And I, I like the wittiness of Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. That being said, he, the Jew and the neurotic and the Yiddish and the Jesus, he lost, he lost me at Jesus. Jesus. He totally lost me at Jesus. That's how I, that's how I get into characters. I just but, think Jesus is an awesome guy. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I like the go. idea that the, the studio were giving him a little back massage and like, do you know what we really need? 
A little bit of religious controversy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is a great place to move on to our next topic, <clears throat> which is um, uh, some Johnny Depp news. We were just talking about Johnny Depp yesterday, actually, <laughs> and how not wonderful Transcendence was. I'll give you my review of Transcendence in one second. <sighs> so Johnny Depp is going to be in Kevin Smith's new movie. Yeah. So I have a theory about this. Okay. I'm going to shoot it out there and you can all shoot me down. Great. Um, so, I, so we read this like interesting piece of news about a couple of years ago now, maybe when it was last year sometime, about how uh, the Johnny Depp and Vanessa Parody divorced and how she, this, this is quite rich, but she was the one pushing for the Pirates of the Caribbean movie, but she was pushing Johnny Depp to go more mainstream and to really come out in front. So obviously he's had a pretty, you know, I think he's had a good run in box office terms, but he's had a pretty bad run in being the cool Johnny Depp he once was. So I wonder if he's gone straight to Kevin Smith and sort of like, just let's do something wacky. Tusk is about the wackiest idea coming out that you could pin Johnny Depp to, and right. it's, a, it's a last ditch attempt to be cool once again. So Tusk, Tusk is, is about a guy. It makes it even sadder. <laughs> it makes it worse. I understand it right. Tusk, Tusk is about a guy who, who invites a roommate to right. stay with him free of charge so long as he dresses up like a walrus? Based on a true story. Okay. So the story was there, were, uh, there was a post found on the internet on a sort of Craigslist like site uh, where a guy said, You can have a free room in my house. All you have to do is dress up as a walrus for an hour a week. That's it? Answer, just an hour you have to, Something like that. You have to answer as a walrus. I, I, dress, I'll, I, I dress up like I'm, a walrus on the regular. I volunteer. So the Kevin Smith takes the story and puts a dark, dark twist turn and locks the walrus in the basement. They add tusks to his face. And they actually like surgically turn yeah, him yeah, into yeah, a walrus. Dark. Wait, it's that happened in real life? No, no, no. In real life, he just dressed up like a walrus for a couple weeks. In real life. Right. So it's like centipede. Yes, it's like, yes, like yes, a yes, more, yes. a more it's like... It's a human yeah. centipede play, yeah. They, someone goes up to the basement and they start attaching tusks and they turn this guy into a walrus and Johnny Depp is the evil mastermind. Huh. I want Johnny... If it to be like an indie horror sensation, yeah. then Johnny Depp but it's the cool creates guess. the cream again, is the cool guy, and we forget about... Is this cool? We forget about Alice in Wonderland. No. Right. I thought we were done with him. Didn't he retire? Something like that? No, yeah. no, he didn't retire. He keeps saying he, he keeps saying, he's like, no, I'm done making movies, and then he made cast. Red State. He kept saying, he said a lot in the last couple of years about how he's really wanted to not, like, branch out and not be, like, Kevin Smith. Even though, <laughs> even though the Kevin Smith movies are the best Kevin Smith movies, and everything in the not Kevin Smith movies are kind of crappy. Right. Yes. Um, that's his, that's been a lot of, like, and I, and I get it from a personal, like, I want to do something different standpoint and so if it's kevin smith wanting to continue to do something different exactly. and johnny depp wanting exactly. to do something different i feel like they'll end up doing something crappy that's the same it sounds like an <laughs> intersection of bad ideas on everybody's yeah, yeah but I, I applaud that intersection i mean i'll stand there and watch the cars crash because you know good for them for driving well and i'd rather <laughs> i'd rather they do that like even if it ends up being an absolute train wreck i'm more interested in seeing them do that than in watching pirates five Right, yeah, like yeah, Kevin Smith right. directs Pirates of the Caribbean, the space journey. Not as interesting to me as Tusk. Right. Tusk is just inherently Kevin more Smith's interesting. Like they get a beer and he's like, John, I just can't do it anymore. And then Johnny's like, you know, Burton just keeps putting me in the same makeup. <laughs> Let's do something weird. And I swear to and Christ, if I'm pale in one now. more movie. But that was what I was excited. About. I was excited about Transcendence because I thought that it was going to be yeah. all right. Johnny Depp got a divorce. He doesn't have to be mainstream anymore. This is this is him going back to like intellectual, smart, interesting roles, and I think he forgot how to do it. No, he just needs to like play a person. I yeah, watching Johnny Depp crazy. play like a soccer right. dad, but not like a soccer dad that uh, he's got a crow that talks to, and not a soccer dad who has like some sort of time engine hidden in his basement, just and not a soccer dad who can like fly and shoot fire out of his face, like just normal soccer dad, like so middle of the road. He Just had play a he, human. He had the he had the chance for the first super sped up twenty minutes of Transcendence to play a, a normal human. And then he plays a computer. So and you want him in draft day, basically. You just want him yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or what's Johnny Depp in draft day? I want Johnny yeah. Depp. It's, it's going back to like where he used to be. Like he used to be a great sort of like indie actor. He gets a rough deal on Gilbert Grape yeah, because no one talks does. about him in that movie. Everyone talks about it. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. What we think Johnny Depp's career is done. Nothing. Nothing interesting left in him. I'm God. I'll be surprised <laughs> when there is something <laughs> well, interesting. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, it's been 15 years it's now. It's been a long time. It's been That's 15 years now People since. People forget Pirates. how long it's been since he made something that was genuinely like. You know. I really, I, I, I don't want it to be good. No. I want him to have this big, like, 
like Matthew McConaissance. I want him to have a Johnny Deppison. Michael, we, we we all want that. Yeah. We we all want that for everyone. I just don't. No, I just I don't think Johnny Depp everyone. wants that. Well, here's a here's another excellent segue for everybody. Speaking of uh, of things that are coming back, Heroes Reborn yeah. is our next topic. <laughs> Mackenzie's excited about it. It's so gonna be a web series. So I'm gonna scoot back and let her go. There's go I don't really have anything to say, but there's gonna be a web series potentially with some of the old characters. And what's her name has gotten much better on Nashville, so I'm excited for her to come Hayden back. Hayden Panettiere. Yeah, is more I can't than just handle. A what's her name? She's so good. Okay. She's always been really good. So there's there's a lot of speculation about how this web series will fit into the Heroes Reborn on on NBC. No, see, I think the best thing they can do with this web series is come up with a convincing way to make it so that the last three seasons of the original run just never, never happened. Never <laughs> yeah, I think they but the first season was so good. Yes, the best thing they can do with this web series is is get it back to the way everybody was at the end of the first season. No weird twins from Guatemala or whatever they were. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. They just got too many superpowers. It just became too big too of a universe. If too everyone's special, then exactly. no one is. Right. One of my friends is re-watching it, or watching it because they never watched it in the first mm -hmm. place. And they like season one of yours. And I was watching it and I was like, the, what was the blonde woman's name? Yeah, no, the yeah, old... No, oh, Allie uh, Larder. Allie Larder's character, her power in season one is that she has an evil twin in the mirror. Like, yeah, what? It was a terrible yeah, power. It's like a <laughs> conceptually retarded idea. I, I read somewhere that her original superpower was that, like a mom, she could be in two places at once. And I'm like, what the didn't they go with that? <laughs> that that's dumb and it's still better than whatever they did. And let's not forget that Heroes had web series, right? In terms of getting excited about like Heroes having a show and a web series, Heroes was like Smallville, one of the forerunners in actually having really cool integrated multi-platform storytelling. Too bad it all sucked. I just I, I don't understand what what they're doing with the web series. In I mean, I, they, it has to be something like either it's going to lead straight from the original series right. into the new one, or it's going to just hit a big reset button. Or, it's yeah, interesting it's to me button. that they're doing it on yeah. the web, though. If they, if it's really that important for the for the new franchise, like do it in episode one. Or they've something. never um, been they've never been good at the web TV crossover. Other people have, but mm. they haven't, and so it makes me think that it's going to be this like disjointed, almost unnecessary lead up. Or lead down. I think it might be closure. Right. That's why it's on the web. Keep the fans happy with it. Everyone's like pissed about the way it ended. Keep them happy with this little cheap web series. And then everyone can start again on the new series. I guess I guess anybody who's anybody who cares enough to be pissed off about the new one is going to be on the internet anyway. Right. They're gonna so. all, they're gonna they'll, they'll, they'll know where to find He's it. He's talking to you, internet. <laughs> <laughs> they can watch the web series. They can find closure. And then we can all start reborn in a completely new life. Exactly. All right, well, one last thing. There's no segue here. One last thing that we want to talk about, uh, just because we've never really discussed horror movies on this channel. Like, outside of, we haven't done anything with it since, since like, the Monster Madness right. stuff that we did. Um, but there, Eli Roth's got an interesting new trailer out for, for his next movie called Green Inferno. It's interesting. The name was actually the original script, uh, the original title on the script for Cannibal Holocaust. And the director of Cannibal Holocaust uh, did a cameo in Hostel 2, so it could end up being just sort of a, a, a remake of Cannibal Holocaust hmm. in its own sort of Which weird was way. Banned in forty countries or something crazy like yeah, that. That was a very yeah. controversial movie. Yeah, it killed animals on screen in that movie. It was twisted. Ooh. Yeah, I'm suddenly really excited. <laughs> no, it's it's got a really <laughs> interesting twisted history. cold film. That movie. All I know is there's going to be a lot of dismemberment and eyeballs in this movie. Ugh. Okay, so kind of what, what else is hostel. coming out that weekend that I can see? <laughs> you know, my boyfriend, well, my the, boyfriend sees that. So it's gore porn. It's full on I mean, it's well, Eli, Eli Roth. Roth. Yeah. 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 The guys yeah. Are, the guys I mean, I'm actually more interested in The Sacrament, which he's producing, uh, which um, is sort of about the Vice documentary crew that's going down and it ends up sort of, they get wrapped up in a cult as it starts to unravel. <laughs> he did shoot this movie in Peru or something, right? Didn't they go find, because there's a... There's somewhere a where they could kill babies. Somewhere where they could they could kill dismember babies. things in, in the Allegedly, jungle. they shot with a tribe that had never been on screen before right. for a filmed uh, movie. And now introducing... It's an ethnographic film. That's not hard. I mean, there's a difference between like a, a tribe that's never been filmed before and a tribe that like hasn't met modern life. Like They make it sound 
sound like it's we found a tribe in the Amazon. The tribe and has just been never... going on auditions. Yes. It hasn't been able they to thought, They thought we were gods. Uh, they here's our headshot. We uh, that's all of us. That's Steve back there. This is Howard. Uh, we're the tribe. We've, ne we've never really done gonna, anything, so our resume is a little light. We can go <laughs> some piercings. <laughs> we can go all piercings. We've all got ink. I'll tell you something. You, you seem excited about that stuff. Yeah? Oh yeah, big Eli Roth fan. Well, just just anything where there's just blood and guts, just uh, I, it's fun. I, can, I it doesn't nauseate me. It's it's exciting. I don't know. Cool. I like Eli Roth. I like Hostel. That eyeball scene was a little intense, but uh, see, those are the things fun. that I it kind of pushes your limits. You kind of figure out how far you can go with all the crazy stuff you can put on screen and get away with. Yeah. I don't know. Have you seen this upper footage movie? No. It just came out online three weeks ago. Like it's the one that the the Tarantino movie he bought and then sold. You see the uh, no? No. So this is the movie, um, super controversial or is it? It could make is or isn't real. It's the um, uh, found footage movie of a, a girl overdosing and dying in New York. This footage gets found of this girl at a party. And she takes too much cocaine. She overdoses and dies. No one knew if it was real. Was it set up? And Tarantino uh, apparently bought the rights to the film and then he sold it because he didn't want to make it. And it just came out. Through today. You can watch it on Wait, so someone made it or someone just cut it together? Someone and cut it together and put it into like a sort of documentary slash movie, but no one knows if it's real or not. That's hard in this day of age. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Many, uh, people are raving about it. But you can watch it, it's on like a uh, Vimeo, like VOD, so you can watch it there. And people are saying it's, uh, we have one guy who said it was the best horror movie of the decade. That's really fascinating that, that uh, uh, what could potentially be a real person overdosing on cocaine is considered the best horror yeah. movie. Right. Like, that's really interesting it's, about thinking about like the state of horror films in general and like what scares us in theaters and things like that. And then so something like this comes along. They're calling it like a postmodern Blair Witch. Like a for like now. It's I, I terrifying because it feels like we're heading down this like dark Caprica right. road yeah. of like we're all gonna like go into a virtual reality where we can kill people and then those people end up really dead. Like, we're so close to the Running Man. Yeah. So close. And we're getting real. We're gonna get yeah. real Hunger Games. Yeah. yeah. You're way too excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> now the crew's got excited about Can killing killing teens. Well, let's okay, call okay. this a round table. Thanks for watching, everybody. Come back next time for more movie news on Cinefix Now. Let us know what you think of all this stuff down in the comments below. And thank you again, guys, from moviepilot.com for coming by. Thank you for the topics. <laughs> see everybody, uh, see you guys later? You guys want to keep Maybe. hanging out? or? I don't know. I'm let's get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> let's get out of here. <laughs>